So hopefully by now you'll have seen my first video showing how the autofocus appears to improve on the GH5 dramatically if you change the shutter angle. Well in this video I'm going to explain the reason why. So if you want to skip this video that's fine, if you just want to know what the reason for it or what the result is uh, then just change your uh, shutter angle to less than 180 degrees and that goes for pretty much all the modes apart for uh, 24p and primarily this is in the 25p uh, PAL setting and the 30p NTSC. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you quickly uh, how I actually came about this and then we'll get into the details of what's actually happening and, and the reason why the autofocus is so much better when you change that like uh, that very small um, detail. So the camera at the moment is in 4K 30p and we're at 180 degree shutter and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my microphone next to the lens this is a Canon 28 to 105 USM lens um, and it's connected using a Viltrox adapter uh, this is actually quite a good setup solely because the, no the, uh, the lens is quite noisy and we want a noisy lens for this and uh, it's going to take this microphone to hear it. You probably won't hear it on the actual uh, the shotgun mic. So what we do, we'll set a recording. Okay, so we're recording. And I'm literally just going to put my hand up and you can hear. Now, what I'll do is I'll change the setting now to 120. Oops, sorry, 120. And instantly, you can hear that motor going so much quicker. Now we'll change it back again. 180. 120. 180. 120. Now, I've also been told that um, this is a good thing with the uh, community in on um, YouTube and Facebook that people have tried it by changing the synchro scan and changing that so we're actually at 180 degrees now recording and we'll change it one degree there you go so this is that So this is at 179 degrees, so one degree is changing the order focus speed dramatically. Now there's a reason for that and we'll get on to that and if you're a bit of a geek like me um, then this is right up your street. And to do this we're going to use a good old fashioned whiteboard. So one of the first things you do when you turn the camera on for the first time is you choose if you're in PAL or if you're in NTSC. This dictates a number of things. Um, primarily, it sets the camera frequency to 50 hertz and 59.94 hertz. This is key to everything. This figure here is the key. Now, why is it the key? Because this is your clock frequency. So we'll draw them out. So your clock frequency goes like so, like that. Hopefully you can see that. With one hertz being from here to here. So one entire pulse is from there to there. Now, when you choose your frame rate, and this is the key part, when you choose your frame rate, say we'll keep it easy, we'll keep it to the 50, Your frame rate at 50 um, at PAL is 25 frames a second. 25 FPS. So if we take that as one hertz as being uh, 50 hertz, the frame acquisition for your frame takes up two hertz. So we go from here to here. So we've got one entire cycle. Uh, 
and two entire cycles. Because we have two clock runs effectively to capture one frame at 25p. Now that's straightforward basic logic. Here comes the bit which seems to be the confusing part. If I have my shutter angle set to 180 degrees, the time it takes for the shutter to open and close is effectively half my frame rate, or half my time available for that frame then, sorry. So, so my frame, my frame acquisition is a half of the available time. So my 180 degree shutter lasts only that amount of time. In that time, we get the image plus the AF. So the image is captured and the AF cycle is run as well. Now, unfortunately, what's actually happening is because uh, images within a digital camera aren't a snapshot, they're actually a scan, rather than the image being, or that part of the capture being square, effectively we can draw it as a parallelogram, like so. So your 180 degree shutter takes a little bit longer than half of the available time. So with half of the available, over half of the available time, the only thing your camera can do is wait until it gets to here for it to start its next frame. Now what's happening when you reduce your frame or your actual um, your shutter angle, we'll do this again here, we'll take from point A, so we've got one complete cycle to point B, to there. So this is my ne next frame of my capture. What's actually happening is we've got our parallelogram and we'll make this we're in um, 25p, so we'll make this 150 degrees. The time taken again, we've got half the amount of time for our frame, but because the 150 degree angle is actually less than half the available time, when we put our parallelogram down, we've actually got enough time to run this process again in the next cycle of the clock. So on this cycle, we get an image plus AF. And then we've got a whole amount of time here where we can actually just run a dedicated AF run, like so. So this is why at 180 degrees, we're getting one scan per frame, which does autofocus and image. And when we reduce our shutter angle, and it can literally be down by one degree, what we're actually getting is enough time for the image acquisition, as well as an autofocus scan, which in turn helps us no end, because the, the fact the actual autofocus is keeping up means we get less hunting and all the other traits of the GH5 seem to be pretty much put to bed solely because we, ha we can have a dedicated autofocus scan. So why does 25p work and 24p not? Well, quite interesting really, so we'll change that to our 24p. We'll change these factors here. And those. Now the reason 24p doesn't work is because when you're at 25p and at 50 Hertz exactly half of this process is available for each each part so you've got image and autofocus. When you go to 24p the frame length of the 24p 
is actually longer. So effectively you end up with a little bit of time here before the next cycle starts that you can do nothing with. Now the fact we've got that as the PAL 25P I know that's actually meant to be on the NTSC but it's exactly the same. You're dealing with your clock time pulses. So what we're going to do is we'll overlay our clip, our sample clip now. So we'll have a 25p clip which has been shot with a 180 degree shutter and also one which has been shot with a 20, sorry, 150 um, degree shutter and we'll lay them next to one another and you'll see that the audio pickups are like this on one and on the other which is essentially mimicking what we're saying is happening over here and that's going to be 25p. So you might say that why can't it run a second AF pass solely to capture the AF? Well unfortunately it can't do that because you've got a number of fixed so your time for your shutter is fixed fixed by your setting in the camera obviously you can adjust it but it's fixed for the cycle you can't change your aperture because there's no way your aperture will be able to change in a timely fashion for what's actually going on here and your sensitivity once again you wouldn't be able to change it that quickly so effectively you're restricted to capture an identical frame as the image frame for the AF frame and it's because of that you get that overrun and your camera says can't do it I can't sacrifice my next image for the autofocus now you may say to yourself wow why don't Canon change that to a hundred Hertz that would be fantastic wouldn't it well actually it wouldn't be and it's because exactly the same thing here it's all to do with the amount of time required and you're exceeding the half of the amount of time if you have less than half of the time taken up you can run that process twice so hopefully that's cleared it up and hopefully that's explained why the autofocus on the GH5 is amazingly different when you change your shutter angle and it is that one degree that we've seen which puts it back over that threshold of having two cycles available to the camera clock. As always if you like this video give it a thumbs up, if you don't just give it a thumbs down and more importantly than ever can you subscribe. Well thanks for watching and just remember sometimes it's good to have a geek as a friend. Thanks for watching.